What's up everybody, it's your boy Mimi here. Uh, for brunch, I'm going to be having some um, Zupa Toscana, I think is its name. It's like a type of soup. Um, my parents bought some at the store and I'm going to be having it. Uh, but right now, I've just had coffee. Um, so, uh, check this out. I worked on this for, well, first I'm gonna show you guys two things that are a little less interesting. Um, let me just check something really quick. Okay. Um, okay, so thing number one, um, this is just my desktop, but I set it up now to where if I put my AirPods in, I think they might automatically connect my computer, but I don't want it to do that. Yeah, so automatically connect it to my computer. But um, the cool thing is, is yesterday I was complaining about how um, Oh, there's a hummingbird on outside my window. Um, on yesterday's video, I was complaining about how it used to work where I could click on this and it would disconnect my AirPods if they were connected and it would connect my AirPods if they weren't connected. But I fixed that and now it works. And now there's even a little notification. So if I click on this, there it says AirPods disconnected. Um, and then if I click on this, Now it says AirPods Pro connected. Um, and the reason, it's actually interesting because when it says AirPods Pro connecting, while that happens, my AirPods make the connection noise, um, but they don't start playing sound coming from my computer for like a second and a half. So I actually have it um, wait a second and a half after it connects to my computer because um, functionally it connects once the sound starts playing. Um, uh, and so I actually, um, so, so when, uh, the sound just played and now it says connected because the sound coming from my computer would have started playing, but I got the little notification. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so I got that set up. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, another thing, um, I don't know. I don't know if I showed you guys this yesterday, but now I can do Windows B and it starts the brown noise thing um, instead of having to run the command brown noise. Um, but yeah, so um, this is the actual thing I worked on for like eight hours yesterday and it's this. Um, this is a script for my YouTube thumbnails that I that I did. Um, so, so I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. Um, I use ChatGPT a little bit um, you can actually go on to this link and see how I used it. Um, there are a couple instances, like one of the instances was um, uh, to scale the XEF, like GIMP image files up. I used Image Magic, but Image Magic didn't do it correctly. It um, flattened all the layers together um, at 100% opacity, and a lot of my thumbnails um, don't have all their layers at 100% opacity. So um, I ended up having to do it in a thing called GIMP batch mode, which is basically just um, the same as GIMP when you open it up in a desktop form. Uh, it's just uh, a, um, it's a, uh, but instead you can pass uh, arguments to it as if it were a command line application and it doesn't open up graphically in batch mode. Um, so I was like, hey, ChatGPD, could you convert these image magic commands um, into a GIMP batch mode commands? And it, and it did, and it was good. Um, a couple other times were like, um, I wanted to be able to like, um, so, so I want this script to be pretty portable for me. Um, and so I um, was like, hmm, like what if I uh, have a new installation of my operating system and I don't have image magic yet? Or, um, you know, I don't have, um, I don't have rsync yet or something. I wanted it to check, um, if I had all of the commands that were used in the script. Um, and, um, if it did, if it didn't, it would exit, right? I wanted it to do that, but I didn't really know how to do that. Um, so it seems like, so like, uh, like right here is AI, um, uh, um, but it looks like it, um, it made just a list called commands and then it says for CMD, uh, in, 
uh, this list of commands. I assume that hat means all, like all things in the list to do. Um, and then if, um, uh, I presume this is saying if command dash V and then for all of these, um, well, it goes one at a time because it's a loop, but I, presumably it goes like base name, loop, cut, loop, uh, find, loop, uh, gimp, loop, you know? Um, so it finds, uh, uh, it checks to see if command dash V has an output. Um, and if it uh, doesn't, it says all the commands uh, that didn't have uh, an output, um, and then it just exits. Um, and you know, this works, I, I tested it. Um, but if it does have everything, it just echoes all required commands are installed. And uh, then, you know, aside from that, I programmed pretty much everything except for the GIMP batch commands. So um, I have uh, this variable called count, and it's basically asking if, um, count is basically seeing if there are any XCF files in the thumbnails directory. Um, and basically an XCF file is like the GIMP equivalent to a uh, uh, Photoshop PDN file, um, uh, or PSD file or whatever. Like, you know, when you're on Photoshop and you press save instead of export, um, think of the file extension that it uses when you save a Photoshop file, um, and then just imagine uh, that equivalent for GIMP, and that's what XCF is. Uh, a GIMP XCF file isn't really an image file, it's more like a, um, a collection of like attributes uh, such as layers and, and effects and stuff that can be opened in GIMP. Um, but anyway, um, so... Um, where was I? Yeah, so it goes to see if there are any, um, if there are, uh, if there's exactly one XCF file, because I kind of made all of this under the assumption there's only one GIMP XCF file, and 99.99% .99 of the time there's only going to be one GIMP XCF file in there. Um, but if there's more than one, it, it prints out, an, uh, prints out an error. Um, let me, I hate to do this, but I, I worry that this thing might actually be a little distracting right now. Um, so, so, um, it errors out if there's more than one XC, uh, GIMP XCF file, but if there is exactly one GIMP XCF file, it, um, renames that file to year, month, day, hour, minute, second, millisecond, uh, dot, um, XCF, so it renames it from untitled to, dot XCF to, um, the, uh, modification date dot XCF, um, and then it creates two variables, one of them is called XCF files, and it's, uh, basically, um, it's basically just all, um, it's basically just all .xcf files. Um, thinking about it, I could just have a date attribute and then I could, um, just call the date attribute here instead of just running it in line. So then I just have to call the date attribute here and here, and then I won't even have to do .xcf file, like, .xcf files because, well, I would, but, okay, anyway. I just realized I didn't. I I don't really have to do a find command if um, if there's only going to be one XCF file. But anyway, uh, so it creates this variable XCF files where it gets all of the um, where it basically gets the file um, that was just renamed to the current date, um, and then it creates a uh, a uh, variable called base, um, and it basically just runs base name on XCF files uh, to get the name of the file except for the file extension .xcf, which is going to be useful later. So go down here. Um, basically what this does is it turns the XCF file into two files, um, a large uh, PNG 4K version of the thumbnail and a uh, small uh, original dimensions 90% uh, quality JPEG of the thumbnail. Um, so it creates, um, let me just open up again so I could do a diagram. Why is this so small? Okay, that's weird. Um, so for example, um, it has, uh, so
So um, it has uh, so like year, month, day. Of course, it's year, month, day, hour, minute, second, millisecond. But I don't want to have to write that down every time. It has this dot xcf, um, and then it turns it into um, year, uh, month, day, uh, large dot p and g, and it also turns it into um, uh, year, month, day, uh, small uh, dot uh, uh, jpeg, right? And uh, it's important to remember that um, this year, month, day, large is scaled up to 4K, um, and it's important to remember that this is not scaled up and it's actually compressed uh, with 90% compression quality into the JPEG uh, image format. So now um, in the sort of root thumbnails directory, there is this file and there is this file and there is this file, right? And they're all of the same image, it's just that they're all in different formats. Um, and so that's basically what this does. Um, and then what it does is it adds the copyright information to the thumbnails. Um, so um, yeah, it adds it in the, in the metadata. Um, something that actually took me like an hour to figure out was um, you'll notice here uh, in uh, thumbnails, DIR, I can increase. Um, you'll notice here in, um, in uh, this magic command that adds uh, the copyright information to the metadata, you'll notice that the PNG file um, sets the author metadata to this, um, and then it sets the copyright metadata to this. Uh, but you'll notice on the JPEG uh, metadata command, um, it just sets a single comment with just the copyright comment. And uh, the reason why is because um, uh, PNGs could hold, I'm sure this isn't technically true, but PNGs can hold um, as many uh, comments as you want, like as many lines of comments as you want. So I have a comment called author and I have a comment called copyright, uh, which has the con with that, which has this contents and this contents respectively, but JPEGs can only have one uh, metadata comment. Like JPEGs can only have one comment. Um, so I had to remove, um, so I basically had to c concatenate um, author, the, 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 the author, uh, uh, metadata and the copyright metadata into one single comment so I could add it to the JPEG. Um, and that took me a while to figure out because I kept running basically the exact same version of this command up here except I replaced PNG with JPEG and I was like why isn't it updating a comment that's so strange but it's because JPEGs can only hold one comment and I was asking it to add two and so it didn't add any. Um, anyway, uh, so then it, um, it goes to see if, um, yeah, so then uh, it gets the XDF file and the JPEG file and the PNG file, and it um, uh, gets the current year of the file, like the, the, the it gets the year the file was made, uh, and then it gets, is that true? Yeah, stat-c, right? Oh, percent Y. Yeah, so it uh, gets the modification date of um, every file, and it, it gets the modification year of every file, and it gets the modification month of every file, um, and then it creates a directory corresponding to that year and month, um, and then it moves it um, to that year and month in the file system, uh, along with a license. So um, let me just uh, do this really quick. So it has this, um, uh, okay, so it has this .xef file, um, and it has this .jpeg file, and it has this uh, .png file, uh, right? And the thing it does is it can tell that all of them were was made in a, for example, so for this example, I'm gonna talk about it in like as if these as if these files were made in 2025. Um, so it can tell that all of these um, uh, files were made in 2025, but because the 2025 folder doesn't exist, 
it creates it, um, and it puts a uh, license uh, dot txt in it, right? And then um, it looks at what month all of these were created in, right? And it could tell it was made in, like, for example, uh, April, right? So then inside of the 2025 folder, um, it has, you know, 01, 02, 03, 04, uh, depending on um, the, that, that all sort. Um, the thumbnails made in the year of 2025 uh, based on what month in the year of 2025 they were made in. So um, because the XCF and the JPEG and the, 20, and the PNG file were all made in April of 2025, um, it moves to the 2025 folder where license.txt is created. And then inside of the 04 folder, which is for April, um, it creates, um, it adds, uh, it has the, it puts in the XEF and the .jpg and the .png um, and the PNG file, right? So it puts all of these into the 04 uh, directory in 2025 because it was made in April of 2025. Um, inside of this month's directory, there's also a duplicate uh, license uh, .txt file, right? So that's basically uh, that's basically what this does. Um, and so then it goes to um, here. Can I show this? Yeah, I can. Um, so. Um, it goes to here, and it uh, pings google.com to see if it's um, connected to the internet. Um, and if it's not, it just says no internet connection, skipping internet-related tasks. But if it is, it does all of this stuff. Uh, so basically what this does is it runs rsync um, with all these uh, flags that I like. Um, by the way, if you're ever running rsync with uh, a progress indicator or an info equals progress to indicator, um, something really important uh, you should do is you should add the flag dash dash no dash ink dash recursive um, so then the progress bar is a lot more accurate um, if you run it without this you'll see um, your progress be at like 70% and then it goes to the next folder that it's moving and it sees that it has like 10,000 files in there and it goes from like whatever percentage it was before what did I say like 70% it goes from like 70% to like 40% and then it just goes back up um, but if you add no ink recursive, it's impossible for your progress bar to ever go down. Um, it only goes up and it's a lot more accurate. So um, always, try to add this to rsync commands if you're having, if you want progress in there. But anyway, um, it also excludes .git um, and then it moves it to my NAS server. Um, so it just backs up all the thumbnails to my NAS server. Um, and then it changes directory into thumbnails directory uh, because um, all of this in the past was all done in um, because all of this in the past was uh, done in absolute addressing to the directory, now we're going to relative addressing. Because uh, I only have Git experience with relative addressing, but um, then it does Git config user name Leo the PO, Git config user email, the Leo the PO email I use for Leo the PO related things. Um, uh, and then it creates a, uh, a variable called git date, which is just the date. Um, it runs git add all, um, and then it does git commit m auto update and then the name of the update uh, and then it pushes um, with my github username and token which uh, you know I can't show here uh, and it brings it to the thumbnails dot git um, uh, repository um, and if I open that up really quick I'm gonna open that up in chromium Uh, yeah, so right here we have um, the Leo DPO uh, thumbnails repository, and this is where it uploads everything. So, um, uh, yeah, so for those of you looking at this and you want to look at some of my thumbnails, uh, something really important is, you know, say you want to look at a thumbnail for uh, uh, September of 2024, it's very important that you don't look at the small .jpg version. It's 
uh, sort of vital you look at the large .png version uh, because this version is um, scaled up to 4K um, and if you look at the small version, you know, it's itsy bitsy, but if you look at the large version, it's, uh, uh, it's gigantic, right? Um, and it's because it's scaled up to 4K. Um, and that's the preferred viewing experience, as it says in uh, the README. Um, I think this is against the TOS of GitHub to store images here, um, but you know, uh, it's fine. Just don't, just don't narc. Um, uh, but anyway, so uh, yeah, um, I have it automatically run um, whenever I save a file to um, the thumbnails directory. So. Um, I'm gonna show you guys that really quick. Let me just set everything up. Um, ha, you know what? Uh, this could be this can be my thumbnail for today. Um, but let me just add some cool little flourishes. Let me make the background not black because straight black is kind of ugly. Uh, there we go. Um, and then what's happening? Oh, I see. Okay. Um, let me make this black uh, and then blur. Um, let's do, can we do eight? Uh, 16. There we go. Um, okay. And then let me add some uh, noise to this. Um, let me add some noise to this. Uh, spread uh, two there. Um, I'm gonna have to change something here, but let me add that to this too. Um, so then that's gonna be a blur of 16. Uh, multiply that, and then that's gonna be a noise uh, a two new seed, and then a noise two new seed. Um, there we go. So the shadows here should be with identical settings. So um, now uh, it's quite ugly just having the it's quite ugly just having the text behind here, so I'm gonna um, make this a little less uh, noticeable. Can I make this link grayer? Oh yeah, there we go. What's 255 divided by two? 127? Could be 128 for simplicity's sake. Um, there we go, so that's about half the brightness. Uh, what else? I think it would make the background of this thumbnail a lot more interesting if I, um, changed some, if I added like a very um, subtle gradient to the background. Uh, there we go. Sure, and then we can do, we can add some noise to this, so we could do maybe uh, 256 noise on this maybe. Sure, and then we can do a 0.5 blur to smooth out the noise a little bit. Nice, okay. Um, and yeah, okay, I think this makes sense for a thumbnail today. So, um, just so that I don't have to show you guys my file system, I'm gonna... Uh, okay. And then... So uh, what's gonna happen is I'm going to save this, right? And then in the 2024 folder, this thing where it says 27 minutes ago, that's gonna change to now um, because as soon as I save this, it'll uh, automatically start the script. Um, and then within like 10 seconds, it'll just say it'll just say now because it had just added that thumbnail to GitHub. Uh, so I'm gonna press save and then I'm gonna start restarting uh, the page. I should actually do this with I should do this with Librable because I think I have caching on on Chromium. Um, uh, there we go. Okay, so 
So I'm gonna press save and then I'm gonna keep refreshing this page and then uh, pretty soon after this is gonna start saying now. So I'm gonna save. Okay, now I'm gonna start pressing F5. Come on. Now, see? Um, and now uh, if we go into 2024, and then we go into October, um, you'll see that this thumbnail is right here and it's just available online. Um, so I'm really happy with how this turned out. And you'll notice if I copy this image and I paste it in here, you'll notice it's uh, four times the size because every single big image is upscaled to 4K. Um, and so, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, really happy with this. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I have therapy today. I don't really know what I'm going to be having for dinner. Um, I have to do some schoolwork when I got home from therapy too. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the link uh, to the repository is in the description right now. You can look. It's at the very top, the link, um, and you can just look at uh, any of my thumbnails since August, um, I think August 7th or August 9th or something of 2019. Um, yeah, since August 7th. The reason why it only goes back to August 7th of 2019 is that's when I started using Linux um, and therefore had to um, sort of start my whole file system not file system in the technical sense, but file system as in my system of files and folders. I had to uh, uh, start my file system from scratch. Um, and so I, I, that's when I started really sort of organizing my thumbnails, um, but I never really locked in to uh, making them immediately available and uh, you know, uh, stuff like that uh, up until very, very recently. So um, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, the link's in the description. Uh, see ya, dude.